be. All right, let's start off with the fact that the debate is heating up. Of course, you were part of a debate that occurred yesterday, and we heard Lonman CEO Ian Farmer uh, talking about the minister, Susan Shabangu, taking leadership with this regard. I think this is a very positive step. The fact is the um, first two things are happening. One is the whole issue with ICT, uh, Kumba and ArcelorMittal mm. uh, and the Lonman issue have really pushed the government into now addressing these issues in the mining industry in a much more proactive way. That's the first thing. But the second thing which one is seeing from the debate last night at uh, the Gordon Institute of Business Science is that mining companies are the first time that I can recall in, in many years actually talking out mm -hmm. and articulating what the problems are with the regulatory system. And I think it's great that they're doing so because you, need, you really need to have an open debate about this. And also just looking at the fact that many are saying, can we reverse the damage that has been done to South Africa's mining industry? Do you think it can be reversed? Do you think it's just a matter of amending certain regulations which are quite vague and ambiguous? Well, that's step one. I mean, I've always taken the view and I've, I've long been a critic uh, of the MPRDA the Mineral Petroleum Resources Development Act for giving the regulators too much discretion, for things being too open-ended, for not having any time limits, for an absence of a mining title system which is open and, and available in real time. So, I mean, the fact the government is now prepared to tackle these issues is obviously a step forward. But I must say it's only a first step forward because it's one thing to change the law and it's great that the government mm -hmm. and the minister appear to be willing to do that through this tripartite MIGDET process. But it's another thing about implementing the law. One of the things that this whole prospecting right debacle has thrown up is the Ministry have said they, you know, they were just overwhelmed with applications. They had 25,000, which is a, a huge number for anybody to deal with, and they simply didn't have the capacity to deal with them. So what I really would say to the government, and, and I mean, obviously the mining industry and everybody else who advises it, people like me need to be part of it, you need to introduce, it's all very well having uh, changing the law, we need to introduce a more effective regulatory system and that's what we need to move towards. Uh, also just one of the topics that you mentioned in yesterday's debate and it was about the department ha handling a lot of the administration that we've been seeing. Uh, you're talking about whether we should be depoliticizing uh, you know, uh, the mineral rights as well and looking at whether a separate body should be handling all these issues. Yes. And you're quite well, a big advocate of yeah, it. Yeah, I am. I mean because they're, 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 you know, they're, they're a couple of good examples for that. The one is in, in Ghana, they have, and it's fairly new, they have a Minerals Commission which is an independent body appointed by the President with the uh, agreement of Parliament which regulates all mining and exploration licenses and it's independent of the government and it's protected from political interference and I think it's done a pretty good job. Then you have the pretty extreme example of Chile where after the Pinochet dictatorship the mining code was changed so that the the courts, the judges award exploration mining rights, and that was to depoliticize the process, take it out of any regulatory process and actually give it to the judiciary. So that's a pretty extreme thing to do. But I really think we need to look in South Africa at a new model. Uh, and I was in Brazil in June, and there they're, they're actually reviewing their mining code. One of the proposals that the Lula administration have come up with, and I know there's an election very soon, is to actually dismantle the current mining department and create an independent regulatory agency. And I think that's going to happen. Mm. Well, do you think it's likely that it's going to happen here in South Africa? I mean, Susan Shabanga, the minister, of course, alluding to the fact that many amendments need to be done and they're going to be tabled before Parliament uh, before the end of the year. Do you think that such a body could be perhaps in the pipeline? Well, First of all, I don't think those amendments are going to be tabled before the end of the year. That's not possible. I mean, Parliament goes into recess at the beginning of December. Legislation has to be approved by the Cabinet. I don't see this bill coming to Parliament, I would guess, much before April next year. I mean, I'd love to see an independent regulator created for the mining industry. I think that's a big ask at the moment. I think that might come down the line. The other problem in South Africa is that our experience with independent regulators has been rather mixed. If you look at ICASA, just as one thing, where that regulator I think has been subject to regulatory capture by the telecommunications industry because it's, it's weaker than the industries that it regulates. On the other hand, institutions like the Competition Commission, the Competition Tribunal, I think have been very effective 
in regulating competition policy. So the, 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 the experience in South Africa has been a bit mixed. Mm. All right. In terms of mechanisms that we can be putting in place to, to sort out the problems, the issues that face mi most of these mining companies right now, what would you be putting on the table? And let's allude to the fact that you know, the, the BE uh, you know, issue, the, the empowerment demands, perhaps slightly ambiguous. And of course, a lot of people alluding to the vague mining charter. What solutions, what short-term solutions can be implemented? Well, look, uh, the, the, one of the things, good things coming out of the debate last night, I think everybody agreed, perhaps with the exception of Mr. Rocha, mm -hmm. that uh, one needed to balance competitiveness and empowerment. And what one, the problem in South Africa, we've got the equation wrong. So the whole emphasis of government in terms of mineral regulation in the last six, seven years has been on empowerment and specifically on equity divestiture and, and promoting BE through uh, equity offsets and so on. The, the, so in that issue, the issue of competitiveness has been lost. So th South Africa has actually slipped down the Fraser Institute rankings in terms of mineral production. We've gone backwards, all those other things. So that needs to, you know, the balance needs to be redressed. That you actually, we obviously need to have empowerment in this country, but we, it, it needs to be broad based. And one also at the same time needs to promote the competitiveness of the industry. So in terms of short term, one of the key things this regulatory change needs to do is remove the high levels of discretion in the Act and introduce time limits for the making of decisions. And I think if you did those two fairly simple things, one would go a long way in fixing the regulatory environment. Because it seems that most mining companies are feeling relatively vulnerable because they're not sure if they're complying or if, in fact, they're not complying. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, the reality is, and the statistics show that, that it, it takes more than a year to get a mining right at the moment, which yeah. is, I think, not right. Some companies have taken five years to convert their old order rights, which is also wrong, and because you have no certainty with that. So clearly you need to address those issues in the short term and, and make sure that you have a more effective system. Mm. Uh, Peter, looking at the fact that you also helped write the mining laws for Nigeria, uh, what aspirations do you have in assisting South Africa at this point in time and what would you be changing? I mean, the big thing that you would be changing right now. Well, I mean, the thing that happened in Nigeria three years ago is the minister and the ministry at the time were absolutely focused on promoting international best practice, removing administrative discretion introducing time limits. In fact, in Nigeria, I mean, the time limits are extraordinary. I mean, you have yeah. to grant a license within 45 days, which I don't know whether that's realistic. Um, so we, we need to move towards that sort of model. Mm. Nationalization of mines. Clem Sanchez, scenario planner, relatively concerned about this, saying that most investors are looking at uh, any kind of move by the South African government to do this. Debate has also been heating up here because we heard that the ANC Youth League president, of course, has been talking about it for some time. Uh, the ANC sort of gunned it down, and then it seems the debate still is on the table your view on this? How do you think it's going to play out? Look, I think it creates a lot of noise and you have that coming on top of all these licensing issues. It's not good for the country. It introduces, I think, an unnecessary degree mm -hmm. of sovereign risk. I have to say that both President Zuma and uh, Susan Shibangu have knocked the issue on the head, mm -hmm. but Julius Malema is like a dog with a bone, uh, the proverbial bone, <laughs> and he's not letting go. And the thing is going to be discussed at the ANC's National General Council meeting in Durban on the 20th of September, which is round the corner. I would hope that the National General Council would go along with the ANC senior leadership rather than the junior leadership on this issue. But I suspect that this issue is not going away. It's going to carry on until the uh, five yearly conference of the ANC, which is in Bloemfontein in December 2012. And unfortunately, while it carries on, it just creates further uncertainty mm. and nervousness about where this mining industry is headed in this mm. country. Well, just very quickly, what should investors be doing? I mean, obviously, you're not someone that uh, invests actively in the stock market, but when looking at these mining companies, should you be sitting on the sidelines? Well, I mean, some, obviously, some mining companies here have fantastic prospects. I'm not mm. going to give it yeah. advice about that. But, I mean, you know, I, I think investors need to make sure that the mining companies they're investing in are dealing with these issues effectively and are taking on the government and asserting their rights when that is appropriate.